All right, part two. Um, we just got done reading uh, Acts 24, 25. If you're joining us, uh, and this is a new video to you, go back and watch part one, which just happened, about 20-minute video, nice short introduction to this. But Paul is testifying to Felix uh, there in Caesarea. Um, we're about in the year 59, 60, thereabouts, uh, in Acts 20, 24, 25, and Paul is talking about the faith. He's talking about the 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 gospel of Christ and the works that have to go into it. So again, please watch that first video. But going on in Acts 24, 25. So, and as he reasoned of righteousness, this righteousness, what did Paul teach Felix about righteousness? I, I believe here's what he taught Felix about righteousness. Let's go back. We don't, aren't going to have this on the screen, so I'll turn with it in our Bibles. Um, Matthew 25, 31. Go back to Matthew 25, 31. We're going to read this. Um, what is this righteousness? We're going to read about 15 verses. So um, Matthew 25, 31, and then we'll end in 46. <clears throat> So give us a good understanding about what is this righteousness. Okay, so this is uh, uh, Jesus speaking here. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. And before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep, Israel, the Jews, from the goats. Or the Gentiles. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of the Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. In other words, get the thousand year kingdom, right? The, the everlasting life. Um, for I was and hungered, and ye gave me, a meat, gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, and th or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? And, and when he... Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee and the king shall answer and say so at the beginning of that thousand years he will say not in your lifetime not in your eternity not in your eternal life he will say at the beginning of those thousand years he will answer and say unto them verily i say unto you inasmuch as i as ye have done it unto me one of the least of these my brethren ye have done it unto me and then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Thousand years, thousand years, everlasting fire. Okay? For I was and hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not took me not in naked, and ye clothed me not sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and not ministering to thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal now they're going to go into everlasting life and then they will have life eternal don't forget there's a second step in there but uh, nonetheless they will have righteousness they will have righteousness into eternal life so what is righteousness works <laughs> now you all have heard this whole message preached a dozen times or a hundred times or whatever and you've always thought it was about you and about your works that you have to do because every preacher told you you had to do all these works and you don't that's crap but the Jews had to do them to get into everlasting life they had to clothe they had to feed they had to whatever because it was commanded in the law Makes it so easy. Come on, I'm just repeating things you already understand, right? Maybe some of you haven't seen the other videos. Please go back and watch them, uh, uh, the videos and understand that this is about works. Yes? 
we always thought everlasting was related to forever, did we not? And now uh, it's now it is specifically the thousand years. That's correct. Uh, one of the people asking um, asked if uh, uh, everlasting. He said we always thought everlasting was the eternal or the forever, and it's not. It's it's lasting throughout. Right. Yep, it's the forever. For ever. For a time. Yep. Yep. So, what is righteousness? Righteousness was just described there. But the righteousness into life eternal. But the righteousness that got them uh, the everlasting life, not the everlasting fire or the everlasting torment. Okay? So, that's righteousness. Um. That agrees with what Paul says in Acts 17, 31. If we go back to Acts 17, 31, 32, that same righteousness, which we read briefly on the, on the first video. Again, please go watch that. Um, Acts 17, 31, 32, Paul was giving, this is what he's in trouble for. Because he hath appointed a day, a day, not a time, not a torment. First day, the beginning of that uh, thousand year kingdom. He had appointed a day in which he will judge the world. What? In righteousness. Do I, do I have that one up on the screen? I don't think I do. Sorry, I don't have, I don't have uh, um, Acts 17, 31. But he will judge the world in righteousness. So what is this righteousness? Judgment. That... By that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear again of this matter. Okay. So th that agrees. Righteousness will occur at the just resurrection. If you haven't seen just resurrection, watch two videos ago. Uh, watch last week's videos about the just resurrection. Uh, when did this resurrection under the law stop being awarded? Romans 3.21, right? But now righteousness without the law is manifested, right? And so we'll go through a little timeline here. But, but we have not gotten to righteousness without the law. We're still in Acts, in Acts 17 and in Acts 24. We're still righteousness by the law, by the works, okay? Righteousness was granted based on keeping the law in Acts 24, 25. So let's go through a little timeline here. Um, righteousness without the law was not yet manifested, but now righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witness of the law. In Acts 24, the Jews' righteousness, they were still to, to be judged worthy of everlasting salvation at the beginning of the thousand years, still based on keeping the law. This is consistent with this this. This Acts 24, 25, remember he said, hey, I'm doing everything consistent with the prophets and with the law. I'm doing everything based on prophecy. What were those prophecies about righteousness? Psalm 19, uh, 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Conk, that should have just hit you in the head. I mean, it all hit all of us in the head. But on the video, it should have just hit you in the head that righteousness that he just testified to Felix about is an everlasting righteousness. It's the righteousness that's needed to get into the everlasting. And thy law is the truth. The law is the measurement. The law is the, the scale. Did you keep the law? All right. So in 34, 37 to 54, fast forward, so this is the old, but even in, in more recent uh, prophecy and scriptures, um, the law, keep, the, it's based on keeping the law and belief in Christ. Well, they didn't have a Christ to believe in here, so it's just based on the, 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 the belief, okay, the righteousness. But now this righteousness has to do with Christ plus the law, right? Works plus faith. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness, so feareth him is a belief, or, or give honor or whatever else like that to Christ, and worketh righteousness. That's a, that's a faith plus works. is accepted with him. Uh, Acts 19, 18. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Well, that's works. 
This is faith. Faith plus works. So it's nothing, it's nothing new that in, in Acts 24, we're talking about righteousness. Well, that's faith plus works. Still had to do with the law. We, we hadn't gotten to the, the, the 321. We hadn't gotten to Romans 320. But now the righteousness of God without the law hadn't occurred yet. So we're still righteousness under the law. Faith plus works. Okay. How about temperance? Second thing that, that Paul is... So Paul just laid on Felix that, oh, you, you've got to be... Uh, he didn't say all these things, but you've got to be born again. You've got to enter, to enter in order to enter in a thousand years. No adulterer, no fornicator, nor whoremonger, nor whatever else like that can enter into the kingdom of God, right? Okay, all, all those things I'm sure he laid on him. And that's why it, at the end of this, hair, Felix's hair is blown back. He's like, he trembled. He's like, <laughs> okay, I, you're giving me more than what I asked for. Kind of like what I give you guys sometimes. Uh, more than what you asked for, but to get the, uh, get the point across. Now we're into temperance this is almost worse it doesn't sound worse but this is almost worse than righteousness here's why temperance is a moderation okay so to to have a cool temper means to be moderate right uh, it was necessary in 1 Corinthians, and we're going to turn to 1 Corinthians 9. Now this happened, uh, 1 Corinthians happened, uh, 9 happened just a little bit earlier in Acts, like Acts 18, I think is correlates with 1 Corinthians. But 1 Corinthians 9, let's go talk about temperance. And we might have that. No, I don't know if I have that up on the screen. Yeah, I do. Huh, good. Okay, 1 Corinthians 9, 24, and... Uh, I might have put 24 up there. I didn't put that in my notes. But yeah, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Yeah. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that, you, that ye may obtain. And every man that stirreth, that striveth, for the mastery is temperate in all things. So to master something, you need to be temperate. You need to be level-headed. You need to be not full of temper. Okay, in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep my body, uh, oh, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself be a, should be a castaway. What, he, what, he's, what he's saying here is, <clears throat> I need to be temperate. I need to be temperate in all things, or I could be a castaway. Because when I start witnessing to others, I might actually find an error in myself that I'm not being temperate. Okay, so what, what, what Paul is witnessing to Felix is saying, hey, it, and in this Jewish faith, in this faith, right, you have to be temperate, you have to be modest, you have to be whatever else like that, because even I run the risk of losing my salvation. Works. So being a castaway is the fear if you're not temperate in all things. I'm going to repeat that again because it's important for the rest of my premise to make sense. Being, you will be a castaway. You will be cast away if you are not temperate under the Jewish faith. What does Paul mean by being a castaway or to be cast? Okay? Matthew 5, 29. And if thy right eye offend thee, oh, well, we've heard this one before. <laughs> Does this have to do with being cast away? If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of the members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. 
Paul is saying it back there in 1 Corinthians, if I'm not careful and if my body or something else, if I'm not temperate, I could be cast into hell. What, what is temporal? So, again, he's telling this to Felix. And Felix's hair, again, gets getting blown back. He's like, I could lose my salvation if I don't do works. Temperate works. Second one, Matthew 13, 49. So shall it be at the end of the world, the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. Remember the just, you know, we get that just resurrection. Um, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. Cast them. Cast. It's talking about the same thing. Furnace of fire, hell, whatever else like this. The thousand years is the torment that's going to be here on earth. It's not talking about a fiery place in the middle of the earth. It's talking about here on earth, cast them into the furnace. And then lastly, sorry, this is cut off on the screen, um, Revelation 20, 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's the last cast. That's at the end, lake of fire. Not these two casts, but there's a lot of casting going on. These guys are cast uh, uh, at the beginning of the thousand years. These guys are cast at the end of the thousand years. But to be cast or cast away because of non-temperance, that's why... Temperance is kind of a scary deal. It doesn't sound, it sounds like, oh, I'm being modest. No, there's, there's big uh, 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 ramifications if you're not temperate. And so when Paul is saying to, to Felix, a reason of, of righteousness and temperance and, oh, judgment to come. Well, we kind of know this one's going to be a hit hard, right? Judgment to come. Um, judgment to come. Scripture clearly teaches that the judgment to come is at Christ's return. At the beginning of the thousand years. Before everlasting life. But let's see it. 1 Corinthians 4.4 4. For I know nothing of myself, yet I am... Yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. That's, that's Christ Jesus. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. What do you see in there? Judge, judgment until the Lord come. The judgment to come. To judge nothing until the Lord come. That's the judgment to come, okay? Revelation 11:8. And, and the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. See that again? Thy wrath is come, they should be judged. Judgment to come. Last one, Revelation 4. Oh, it kind of got cut off again. Sorry, I'll adjust my slides. That's not the camera. That's me thinking I have more room on my slides than I do. Revelation 14, 7. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. So that's what Felix is getting an earful from Paul about. The faith. These are the things that you had to do. These are the, the laws that you have to keep, Felix. This is everything that, that is about. This has nothing to do with faith-only salvation. <laughs> right? So Felix trembled <laughs> after he got that earful. And he answered and he says, uh, Go thy way this time. Uh, when I have a convenient season, I'll call for these. See, uh, you know, sc scurrying out the door. In Acts, Paul reasoned with Felix about righteousness, justified the law works, temperance, being vigilant to follow the law, works plus faith, and judgment to come, receiving everlasting salvation, works plus faith. This is why Felix trembled. You get it. So Acts 24, 26, we're almost done. Um, oh, I'm in 1 Corinthians. That wasn't going to read out right. He hoped also that money... So, so Felix... Blast it out of there. But then it says, Felix, he hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul. So that's why he also took off 
or he might have just released Paul at that time, but he was hoping that Paul would pay him off to get, to get himself out of this uh, um, uh, judgment hall, um, that he might lose him. Wherefore, he sent for him the oftener. In other words, he kept calling him back. Like, hey, Paul, come here. Come, let's get together. Hoping that every time that he'd get money for it, or that, that he'd pay him off, okay? And, and Felix and Paul, and communed with him. So he sent for him the oftener and communed with him. Does that mean, let, let, let's, let's get this straight. Does that mean that he took the, the wine and, and the bread? Communed? No. Felix, not a Jew. Felix wouldn't have. It's saying that they ate together. Communed, okay? We're not going to get into large detail here, but this communed, it, it does not have to do with um, um, the blood and do this in remembrance of me and all that other kind of stuff. You might be surprised, but communed means to eat. Communion means to eat. Did you know that the word communion doesn't even appear in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Jesus never said the word communion. Ever. Now, we talk about the Lord's Supper, and that Lord's Supper ha happened during the Passover. But if you read, and, 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 and the word communion only appears in 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, never appears anywhere else in, in the Bible. Once in 1 Corinthians 10, 6, and, and twice in 2 Corinthians in 6, 14, and, and 13, 14. But in Matthew 26, 26, so in all the times that it talks about the Lord's Supper and the Last Supper and the, the communion that you supposedly read into those times, in Matthew 26, 26, Mark 14, 22, Luke 22, 14, Jesus isn't giving some special instruction for a special Lord's Supper. He does it during the Passover eh, while they're eating. Now, if you don't believe me, turn to Matthew 26, 26. Was it a, a special thing with special robes and special... Um, um, things hanging up in front that's the color white that we have to have on communion every time? Or did it go like this? Acts 26, or uh, I'm sorry, Matthew 26, 26, 26, 29. My apologies. No, 26, 26. Yeah, 26, 26. And it says, um, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it. Eh, as they were Communing. She's too bad. Now, is it a special thing? And do you have to understand the significance of that? Yes. But the word communion is not really tied with communion as we think of it in churches. So just go do yourself a little research on that. Because it's it's uh um you know, you know, and, and Jesus doesn't say in 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 Matthew 26, 29, do this every time for the rest of your lives. And, he, and of course, he's talking to the Jews in, in Matthew 26. That's neither here nor there, but it is here because it has nothing to do with us. That, that 26 has to, but Jesus says, you know what, and this whole drinking of the blood, I'm not telling you to go out and drink the, the, the wine and, the, and the, the eat the bread every time you go and do whatever. Because Jesus even says in, in 26, 29, but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of this vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So he isn't saying, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. He's saying, as a matter of fact, what y'all are doing right now in the middle of the meal, I'm not going to do until the thousand years. So is that, are we commanded to do it every month, the first Sunday of the month? Well, Jesus said, I'm not going to be a part of it. <laughs> Until we do it at, right? It's, 
Again, so, so the Jews could do that and they could take the wine and they could do the bread and they could remember and they could be a part of his death, burial, and resurrection so they can be a part of his, you know, resurrection at the beginning of the thousand years. But he didn't command them to, 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 to do. He's like, hey, and when you, when you drink wine or when you eat bread, think about me. Think that you have a death like mine. You have a resurrection. Just be fond. Just reflect on that. He isn't saying go out and do a flipping seance or whatever you want to call it of, of communion and sippy sippy and eat the bread and tear it off. Okay. He isn't saying this. As a matter of fact, he's saying, I'm not going to do, be a part of this until I do it at the beginning of the thousand years. But just remember me. Okay. Sippy sippy. Probably shouldn't have said that. Anyway, so that's what communed. So, so Felix and he ate together, right? They talked often because Felix wanted to get money out of this cat. Wanted to get out of Paul, 27. But after two years, <laughs> what? He was there for two years? Yeah. So Felix wanted to get the bribe for two years, ate with him, communed with him, for two years. But after two years, Portius Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. So this, this, and I think I'm saying that right, Portius Festus. So Festus is, then I think, again, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think this is right by memory, I think he's the fifth governor of, uh, or uh, what they call him, the procurer, procurator, uh, but really it's the governor of, of Judea, and he's the one who will replace Felix as the governor. Okay, and so so when 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 Festus came, Felix was probably like, Oh, I guess it's been two years and I haven't gotten any money out of this guy, but I have learned a lot, I guess, and, and fear and I trembled and whatever. But he, he wanted to show the Jews a pleasure, and so he left Paul bound for that two years. All right. Summary time. This he these are gonna be a couple of, of quick ones. Summary. Um of Acts 24, 16 through 27, I'm kind of summarizing the last two, so part one and part two. Um, Paul gave his defense. Yes, that's spelled that way for a reason. That's the way it's spelled in the King James. Everybody probably thinks, hey, he doesn't know how to spell. Um, but that's defense before Governor Felix in Herod's Judgment Hall in Caesarea. Paul reasoned with Felix about righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. Felix trembled. Um, and by the way, I always think of Homer Danielson. I have to give a plug out there. It's just, trembled, trembled. Right? Were you there? Anyway, that, that song, we all know it from, from whenever, but Homer sang that every uh, Easter uh, uh, service as he was alive back there in, in Trinity and Ellsworth. So, but Paul uh, didn't share the mystery of God, the gospel of God. He didn't share the mystery. He didn't say, he didn't, he didn't share, he shared prophecy. He shared the gospel of Christ, the gospel of the kingdom before that. He didn't share the faith-only salvation. He knew it in Acts 20, 24, but he didn't share it because that isn't what he was on trial for. What was he on trial for? We don't have to say it in unison, but what was he on trial for? The resurrection of the dead. That had nothing to do with faith-only salvation. So Paul is detained for two years in Caesarea um, after this testimony to Felix in, and in, in 25... In Acts 25, Paul's going to get to be tried by Festus. As if Felix wasn't good enough, right? So we've gone through from in Acts, Acts uh, uh, 21, Acts 22, um, Acts 23, Acts 24. Paul's just been defending himself from this doggone judgment uh, 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 and, and this uh, resurrection of the dead having nothing to do with us, having nothing to do with faith only salvation. Thank goodness, this is not our belief. Uh, Mom and Dad and I had the conversation uh, maybe a week ago, I think when we went up to the Mexican restaurant, you know, about people saying, well, why do we even pay attention to the Old Testament? Why even read that? So we know how good it is. We, we don't have this whole judgment. We don't have this whole temperance. We don't have this whole need for righteousness. But now righteousness without the law is made manifest. We don't need that law to be righteous. We are righteous because of the blood of Christ. We, we, we were offered, we were forgiven at the cross, and, and now that 
forgiveness and that salvation is offered to us. It's not an everlasting salvation. It's an eternal salvation. Right? And so how simple is it for us? But we need to know how convoluted and how difficult and how works-oriented and how it would have made any of us tremble had we had to keep all of these rules. Thank goodness we're not Jews. We're not of the Jewish faith. This is the faith that Paul testified um, to Festus is, is at this point in time the gospel of Christ to the Jew first and to the Gentile. Cool? All right. Any questions that they want to go on the record on? All right. Thank you all.